Oh, my name is Joseph Funchit. My name is Joseph Funchit, a teacher with Nigerian Korea Model School, Abuja. I'm here to present a paper on the topic, a case study of classroom teaching plan for model schools. And I'm going to deal with the following table of contents. Introduction, case study of classroom teaching plan, meaning of teaching plan, components of teaching plan, and conclusion, and then the, this is the references. I want to introduce my listing by saying the any students in learning students okay in any learning students must be carried along any 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 teaching process or learning process that the pupils or the students are not carried along is not as good as they're supposed to do. So in order to carry your students along, you need a proper planning of your lesson. Lesson plans don't have to be lengthy. The main things is to make sure the content have the main elements that is needed to pass your uh, lesson properly to your students. They are meant to guide. They are, they are instructions that are meant to guide you as you present your you pass on the instructions to the pupils or to the students. The teacher lesson plan should include all the following components. Number one, the title. The date is very important in planning your lesson. Then the title, the materials needed for the lesson, the lesson objectives. Any lesson without objective, you cannot meet up because with objectives, you know the goals you're supposed to achieve at the end of the day. But without objectives, you cannot achieve any goal. So background, you need the, to know the background knowledge that the children have. That is the previous knowledge they have before now. Then the direct instruction that you need to pass across to the children. If you know the background instructions they have already, that's the background knowledge they have, it will help you to be able to impact the new knowledge into them. Then you give room for students' practice and your closure. After the closure, it's necessary to allow the children to have, to have a quick assessment of the children, either by giving them assignments or whatever it is. So we're going to look at what the title is. The title is the main uh, component of the topic. It's the main to component of your topic. Gathering of, after having given the main component of your topic, you will now have to gather the teaching materials that you need. Before you meet up and up, up, uh, you build an objective for yourself, to be able to meet, you should be able to gather certain teaching materials that you will need to pass the message uh, properly to the children. And in Nigeria, Korea Model School, we use different uh, teaching materials. We use we we use uh, PowerPoints, we use uh, pictures, we use animations, and many other ways to be able to pass the message across. Then, if you have your object, your this, your materials intact, you the next thing you think is to set an objectives. Each lesson should have a let a lesson goal. Minimize your effort to create successful lesson outcomes with smart objectives. What is smart objectives? Your objectives should be number one specific, two measurable, three. I think. SMART is an abbreviation for specific, that is, S is specific, M is measurable.
A is attainable. R means relevant. And T means timely. Timely. So your your objectives must be your object just just your objectives must have the following. That is it has to be specific, it has to be measurable, it has to be attainable it has to be relevant to the topic and it has to be timely that is it has to be have a time bound the objective should be the ongoing focus of your lesson okay so if your objective does not cover this, then you have not had a specific objective. That's a complete objective. Another thing you need is to activate the background uh, knowledge of these children. That is the previous knowledge. You try to, to throw question, questions that will make the children to, to contribute. That is to make you understand where which part of that, the lesson you're going into that they have understood. If you are able to know where they, ha they have knowledge concerning that lesson, you should be able to carry on with the lesson successfully. The point is to make connections between what your students already know and what you're going to teach them. For example, if you, if you are about to present a lesson on transformation of energy, you start out by discussing the different forms of energy. Inv involve your students in the discussion by asking them to share their thoughts based on your explanation. Perhaps you have taught other forms of energy. In that case, you can be able to link up the lesson, the uh, present lesson with the ones you have done earlier. The next thing is, direct instruction that is your main presentation this is the main purpose for your lesson so you have to plan to be able to present it in a way that it will give them more knowledge about what the previous knowledge they have already if you have planned if you don't plan your lesson well by the time you come into the class and children just begins to give you reasons or reasons why they have known much about that topic, you will be discouraged on what on the way forward, how to teach them more concerning that lesson. But if you have a well-planned lesson, no matter the, the level of understanding they have of that lesson, there's something new that you have to come out with it to add to that, to make the children stand, understand you and to know that you know your subject matter. You also have to prepare your sub students for success by pre-teaching keywords that are essential to understanding the concepts. If you don't prepare your children for success, if you are a kind of teacher that comes and makes your lesson very boring or you don't prepare the children, you'll find out that you'll be working alone. The children are left behind while the teacher is going ahead which will not achieve the purpose of the lesson. Be sure to take your time. Modeling is a critical part of direct instruction. When students watch and listen to you apply the concept, they are much better able to understand what you are trying to teach them. It is important to model multiple examples of concepts you are intro introducing. So it's not good for you, the teacher, to just walk into the class and just give a specific instruction and you don't give children rooms to, to explore. 
if you don't give the children room to explore by giving them different models, they may not understand because they don't have the same learning uh, abilities. The children should also be given an opportunity to practice. After you've explained a few examples, allow students to participate in the process with you. If you come into the class and you keep talking, 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 and you don't allow the children to participate at the end of it, you will not be able to pass the instruction as you're supposed to be. Communication will not flow. But communication, communicating the learner, learning objectives to your students, both verbally and in writing serves to motivate them to work with a clear purpose and mind. And you should also understand that some of these children learn through verbal instructions. Some learn through writing. Some learn through seeing. So you should be able to carry on the whole various uh, means of instructions to be able to help them. Okay. Okay, guided practices too should be applied. After you've presented the new concepts and explained a few examples on, on your own, involve your children, guide them to be able to practice, to give you what, because you'll be surprised to see that these children even might, be, with your little explanation, they might have understood this topic more than you are even thinking. So if you guide them to be able to speak out, to be able to give, to contribute, you will discover that they have learned so much and what they have learned will remain permanently in them. But if you don't give them the opportunity to explore, they might be doubting whether what they have in mind is right or wrong. So thereby, not taking it seriously. Then you need also a collaborative practice. This is where students get to apply the new concepts in corporate activities, in cooperative activities. This includes working with a partner. It's good to pair these children together after the lesson or in the process of the lesson so that they'll be able to work together. And if, if one does not understand a particular thing because they are a pair now, they could brush up together and come up with a specific question that will help you to throw more light to the whole thing or a specific instruction that will make them understand the whole thing more. Independent practice, that's the same thing as evaluation. After the whole of your lesson, it's necessary to give evaluation to your lesson. Once students have had the opportunity to apply and practice the concepts with their classmates through collaborative activities, it is now time for them to apply the practice on their own. That comes by giving them classwork or take home assignments, which they will be able to apply that which you have taught them. Then after the evaluation, we talk about the closure or the conclusion. Any lesson without a conclusion is not a good enough lesson. During the conclusion, that's where you are, you give certain summaries that will wrap up your lesson and make the children to have a brief, a be a quick understanding of all that you have said. You might have been in the class and you have been teaching, you have been explaining certain things. There might be a child or two that would not even understand all that you have said or you are you're doing until you get to the summary aspect. So in any, uh, in the modern school, it's not good to ignore the sum the conclusion and the summary. Then quick assessment. You can still, this is demonstration of learning. Assessment evaluates whether or not your students met your lesson objectives. So if you give them some quick assessments, whether to do it within five minutes, to take it home, apart from their take-home assignments, this makes sure the, they accurately 
reflect the learning objectives and allow your students to apply what they learn during the lesson. Without that, you might not have carried them along fully. Some of them in the process of the lesson. That's why we have different lesson, I mean, learning styles. Some will learn from the beginning of the lesson and flow all through. Some might not even pick up until you get to the mid middle of the lesson. Some might even be at the end of the lesson. Some might even not even understand till you conclude until you are until you give them work to go and learn at home or the quick assessment in the class. Motivated students always come to class ready to learn. So it's necessary for you as a teacher to motivate your children. How do you motivate your children? Number one, you should encourage creativity in the classroom by allowing students the freedom to express themselves not only verbally and in writing but also through artistic projects. When students are allowed to be creative, they feel validated for who they are, who built their, their self-confidence and self-esteem. If you are the kind of teacher, in modern school we don't shut children down. We allow them to express themselves in whatever way that is possible. A good teacher can inspire hope, ignite the imaginations, and instill love for learning. Then, incorporate all learning styles. What I have said that earlier, that some of these children might have, they might be slow learners, they might be the ones that would, are very fast learners. So it's better you incorporate all to be able to carry everybody along. So the learning styles we have are students' characteristics. Okay. So students' characteristics, how to engage them. We have the visual learners. So who is the visual learner? This is someone that may enjoy drawing and probably doing watching things that are visually anything you teach the person that does not have a visual content the person might not really understand then the verbal learner the verbal learner may prefer words word games may prefer reading may prefer writing and all general things that are done verbally they are we have also the introverts and the extroverts. If you want to teach the introverts the way, and, you, the, and you, if you're teaching these two class of children, I want the introverts to understand you as much as the extroverts in, in do, you will not be able to achieve any purpose. That's why in mother school, we tend to look at the children's uh, kind of person, the kind of person the children are, the introverts can speak out easily, can feel free to ask questions and other things, but the ex I mean the extroverts, but the introvert is not the same thing. So you take your time to be able to uh, mentor such also to be able to pick up. If you are teaching in a class and you concentrate only on things that are very boring, it's only the introverts that might be able to catch up, but the extroverts might not uh, get your lesson. So it's necessary you, you involve different styles to be able to carry the two set of children along. Some are physically inclined. When you discover that when it comes to hands-on kind of learning, they are very fast. But if any other thing, they are not very fast. So you have to also consider that. So there are different ways you can do to be able to carry on all the children that are in your class. And without proper planning, you might not be able to do all these things. So it's during the planning you'll be able to put all these things into consideration. I recommend... I recommend that every lesson plan 
should have the following the course the the the, the topic should be very specific the objectives should be very specific okay the objectives should be very specific and in all we should always make sure we have a smart lesson preparation in conclusion we have is i i have a sample of lesson notes here that might be adopted the subject the date and the teacher's name must reflect the theme also is necessary the time that just like i told you it must be time bound the class you're teaching the the period you're teaching and the term is also necessary so the objectives must also include the co uh, cognitive the psychomotor and the affective domain any any objectives that does not cover this this three is not a complete objective and our lessons also you have to be specific about the kind of instructions you want to leave to use you can use more than one instruction that is either explanatory uh, demonstration play way and many other ways that you can use so you can use you can even use all this and still use your powerpoints so that is what we do in model school your introduction should carry you should carry the children along in your introduction that's when you make the children to be able to get interested in the lesson if you give them an an introduction that might not carry them along it will be very hard for them to flow even while you do the lesson your presentations have to give the main body of the lesson and this presentation has to go in steps you have the step one, which is you're introducing the new topic. Step two has to do with explaining the whole body. The step three carries the children along, allowing the children to ask questions and also to get them to understand your topic. In step four, you allow the children completely to be able to contribute to their lesson. After their contribution, you try to give an overall assessment, I mean, conclusion of that, then you evaluate the children. In evaluation, you have to make sure that the children, the whole uh, topic for the day is understood by the children. If you assess them, giving them a few class work, it can be verbal, it can be written, it can even be... Uh, a way of demonstration if they are not able to carry on you mean that means you have not achieved your objectives and your evaluation has to measure up with your objectives there's no evaluation of a lesson that will not measure up the objectives if you give us a different objectives and you evaluate in a different way you would never achieve your goal for that lesson it is also necessary to conclude in conclusion you have to give the summary of your lesson and if possible give the children some notes to take home and then finally they, they have to go home with a take-home assignment thank you <laughs>